Hi, I'm Bob, and welcome to Between the Sheets, where we look at Microsoft Excel and related technologies. It's been a while since we looked at a function that Google Sheets has that Excel doesn't, so I want to show you another one, the Google Finance function. This function uses Google's engine to insert current real-time financial data in your worksheet. It will grab prices of stocks, mutual funds, exchange rates for foreign currencies, anything that has a registered symbol. The function has a lot of options you can use, but one of them doesn't seem to work quite right, and I'm going to show you. One more thing. Since Google Sheets runs in a web browser, it doesn't matter if you're using Windows, Mac, mobile, or anything else. This function and the rest of Google Sheets will work the same way. So let's take a look, see how it works. Let's start by looking at the syntax. We say equals Google Finance, so that's one word, there's no spaces, no punctuation or anything. Open up the parenthesis, and we have several arguments. The first argument is we put in what is the name of the exchange, a colon, and then the symbol we're looking for. So for example, if we want to find IBM, we would say NYSE, because it's on the New York Stock Exchange, colon IBM, the ticker symbol. Okay, then we have a comma, then the rest of the arguments are optional. That's why we have them in uh, brackets. So the second argument is the attribute. There's a whole bunch of attributes we can use, and I'm going to show you what some common ones are in a moment, comma. Then if you want a particular date, you can put that in. If you don't put in a date, it will show you the information for the current day or the most recent day if you do it on a weekend. And then if you want more than just one day, maybe if you want a range, maybe you want 10 days, or maybe you want a start date and an end date, you can put that in, comma. And then the last argument optional is the interval. Now, in theory, that's like if you don't want every single day, maybe you want every second day, any 10th day, you put that in. This is the part of the function that is working right. So we were talking about the attribute argument. So here are some common attributes that you can put in that part of the function. You could put in, let's say, the price. Maybe you want the price of a particular share. Maybe you want the opening price. And typical things like high, low, volume. Close yest is the close of yesterday or the most recent trading day. Then you could put in, if you want, the P-E ratio, earnings per share, and the market cap. There are others, but... These are the most common ones that anyone would want. So now we could go and do a few examples. I'll start simple by finding the current price of Microsoft stock. I need to know not just the ticker symbol, but also that it trades on the NASDAQ. So I'm going to say equals Google Finance. And notice I just have to type in the first few letters, and it's already giving me a recommendation for what function I might want. So instead of typing the rest of it in, I'm just going to hit the tab key. So it fills in, it opens up the parenthesis. Okay, so I need to open up quotation marks because most of these arguments are text. So when you have text in a function, whether it's Google Sheets or Excel, you have to have that in quotation marks. So I'm going to say NASDAQ colon MSFT. So that's Microsoft's ticker symbol. Close a quotation mark, comma, I want to know the price. So that's one of the attributes. I'm going to, in quotes, say price, close a quotation mark, close a parenthesis, press enter. Thinks for a bit, and it tells me. There it is. Now, this shows us the latest price, but probably with a 20-minute delay. Now, let's kick it up a notch. Rather than the current price, let's find the price for November 1st, 2022. So I'm just going to go back to that cell. I'll go here into the formula bar, and... Let's just delete that. So after price, I'm going to put in a comma, and now I want to put in the date. So again, I have to put this in double quotation marks. So I'm going to say 11-1-2022. Close a quotation mark. Close a parenthesis. Press enter. And now it tells me the amount, and also it's nice that it gives me a date column. So let's cook it up a notch. Rather than getting the price for just one day, Maybe I want a range of 10 days. So I'm just going to go back up to that cell. Let's go here into the formula bar. Maybe I'll just edit in the cell so you can see it a little better. So what I'm going to do is after that date, I'm going to 
put in a comma, and I want 10 days of it, so I'm just going to type in the number 10. Now, because that's a number, I do not put that in quotation marks. Close the parenthesis again, press enter, and now it gives me 10 days starting on the date that I specified. So a couple of things about what you're looking at here is, number one, if you're familiar with spill functions in Excel, in Excel 365, this will be familiar to you because you see we put the formula into one cell and Google Sheets just spills over, it borrows the space below it. If I had anything in one of these cells that were in the way, the formula would throw an error because there isn't room for it. Also, it puts in this time of day, and that's kind of weird. As far as I know, there is no way to get rid of that other than formatting. What it's trying to do is give us uh, midnight at universal time code to Greenwich median. I think that's just silly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select all of that and I'm going to format it. So on the menu bar here, I go to format, then down to number, and then I'm going to choose a date. So we don't have to look at those times of day. So here's where things don't work as advertised. What I was saying earlier is that last argument, the interval, that means that rather than getting a result for every day, maybe I want a result for every two days or every five days. Let's watch what happens. I'm going to go back up here and remove that parenthesis. So we want 10 days, comma, but I want, let's say, every two days. So I'm going to put in a two, close the parenthesis, and enter. And it gives me this error. And when I go back there, you see it says, hey, parameter five a value is invalid. Let's I'll double click that and let's go to the end. Maybe instead of two days, maybe I want five days or something. And it's still giving me this error. Um, if you put it in quotes, it's going to give you an error. So hopefully Google will get that fixed. Let me just remove that so we have something that is working correctly. Now let's look at a mutual fund. I'll go down over here. I want to know the price of Fidelity's balanced fund. Now, to specify that this is a mutual fund, I use MUTF for the exchange in that part of the syntax. And of course, I need to know the fund symbol. I could do this with or without a date. So let's just say equals Google Finance. And in quotes, I'm going to say MUTF, mutual fund, colon, and the function I want is F-B-A-L-X. That's Fidelity's balanced. Close the quote, comma, I want the price. So I'm going to say price in quotes. Close the parenthesis, press enter. And there we go. I want it on a specific day, maybe. So let's say I want that on December 1st, 2022. And close the parenthesis, close the quote, close the parenthesis, and it gives me, and the same deal applies with formatting the dates here. Maybe I want to see five days of those, so I can say comma five, close the parenthesis, and now I have five business days. The last examples I want to show you are foreign exchange rates. Let's go back to the syntax first. The syntax is kind of the same, kind of different, what we do is, instead of saying exchange and symbol, we say currency. Remember, this is kind of like when we used MUTF for mutual funds. We say currency, and then squished together, we have the first currency and the second currency. No spaces, no punctuation, uh, nothing. And then we have all of the rest of the arguments that we had before. So here's just a simple example. If I want to convert US dollars to Canadian dollars, it's USDCAD. If you're thinking what I was thinking when I first saw this, it was, how the heck am I supposed to know every currency symbol? Well, don't try to guess. Here's a shortened link I made for you. It goes to an official Google Sheet of currency symbols. When you're on that page, click the button to make a copy, and it will put a copy of the worksheet in your own Google Drive. You'll have a private copy of it as though you created it yourself. Okay, so let's scroll down a little bit here. And let's say I want the exchange rate for US dollars for euros. So to divide dollars by euros, here's the formula I'm going to use. I'm going to say equals 
Google Finance. And in quotes, like I said uh, a moment ago, I say currency, colon, and I want USD, that's US dollars, EUR, that's euros, close quote, close a parenthesis, press enter. And we can see that there's 94 cents for the euro. Let's go and edit this here. Let's say instead of euros, I want pound sterling. So I'm going to say still USD and then GBP. Great Britain pounds. Close the quote, close the parenthesis, press enter, and there we go. Now, if I want the exchange rate not for today, but for a previous day, then I have to use the price attribute and specify the date. So let's do this for Japanese yen. Let's go in there and we're going to keep USD and Japanese yen is JPY. Close the quote, comma. I want the price attribute, so I'm going to put a price. And now I want December 1st, so I'm going to say 12 1 2022. Remember to close a quote, close a parenthesis. So I have for that particular day. So I know it's a little more than 135 yen to the dollar. If I want to know the Japanese yen exchange rate for the first 10 days in December, I'm going to add to the end, comma, 10. And this is just like when we were doing stocks or mutual funds. Now, in all of these examples, whether it's currency or mutual funds, stocks, anything else, instead of specifying a start date and a number of days afterwards, you could get data between two specific dates. So we just specify what's the start date and what's the end date. Now let's go up there. I'll leave it as Japanese yen. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say November 1st, 2022 is going to be the start date. And I want the end date to be December 1st, 2022. Close the quotation marks, close a parenthesis. And here we are. And again, I can format this to get rid of those ridiculous times of day. Format number, and I'll choose this date. So now I can see a month of exchange rates between US dollars and Japanese yen. Of course, you can use the Google Finance function in combination with others, and any of the arguments can be cell references. So until next time, my name is Bob, and this has been Between the Sheets.